Welcome to another episode of Kurdistan This Week, where we bring you the latest in the Kurdistan region from NRT Studios in Somani. The Kurdistan region experienced a brutal period for new coronavirus infections this week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday were all in the top six single-day totals recorded since the beginning of March, only surpassed by the 955 new cases announced on September 23rd. The surge in case cases pushed the region above 54,000 officially recorded infections, which is almost certainly an undercount. The region is also expected to pass 2,000 COVID-19 deaths this coming week. Last week, officials in Dahuk called for a two-week lockdown, but the government has not implemented one, with officials in Sulmani saying that it is not necessary in the governorate, despite the high number of deaths recorded there. On Monday, Kurdistan regional government Prime Minister Masrur Barzani addressed the Kurdistan parliament for the first time since assuming office in July 2019 and attempted to defend his government's record in the face of sustained criticism from MPs. In his remarks, Barzani said that the Karaji had $28 billion in debts and commitments and no savings or financial reserves. The government has struggled to pay public sector workers this year, contributing to a general decline in the economic health of the region. Public servants, including teachers, have not been paid since mid-August. MPs from both the government and the opposition said that Barzani's handling of the situation was inadequate. On Tuesday, teachers in Sulmani, Koya, and Kirkuk protested against salary cuts and delays by the KRG. Many of the teachers are already on strike and said that they would escalate their protests if the government did not adequately address their demands by, the ne by next week. In Kirkuk, Kurdish education teachers are paid by the KRG, but have called on multiple occasions for the federal government to take over responsibility for paying them because it is seen as, a better, as better able to pay their salaries in full and on time. Human Rights Watch slammed the authorities in the Kurdistan region for closing down NRT's Erbil and Dahuk offices in a report released on Tuesday characterizing the move as politically motivated and calling for the offices to be reopened. On August 20th, both offices were closed down by the local security forces, which are affiliated with the Kurdistan Democratic Party, following NRT's extensive coverage of protests against the government's handling of deteriorating economic conditions. In neither case did the police or Asayish present a judicial order mandating the closures. Fresh press freedom violations continued in the region this week, with security forces in Erbil arresting independent journalist Sherwan Shawani on Wednesday afternoon. Finally, the Kurdistan region's political leaders marked the third anniversary of the death of Patriotic Union of Kurdistan Secretary General and former Iraqi President Jalal Talabani last Saturday. Talabani's sons, Bafal and Kabad, led the tributes, releasing statements on social media praising their father's accomplishments and service to the Kurdish people. Lahore Sheikh Shangi also paid tribute to the late PUK leader, as did KDP officials. Born in 1933, Talabani became involved in the cause of Kurdish rights and autonomy early on in life. In 1975, he founded the PUK with several other intellectuals and was its primary leader for decades. Following the U.S. invasion, he became the first non-Arab Iraqi head of state in 2005, serving as president until 2014. In December 2012, however, he suffered a debilitating stroke, which effectively ended his active involvement in politics. He died in Germany on October 3, 2017. Thanks for tuning into this episode of Kurdistan This Week. If you'd like more information on these stories and others, check out our website, nrttv.com forward slash en, and be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter.